What is the best Bible software to use? Since you want to grow, the Bible tells us to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. We want to grow in what we know. We want to be like babes, newborn babies, and desiring the word of God like babies desire pure milk. And so in order to do that, you want to consume as much information about the Bible as you can. Now, I've told you before what a smart Christian is. A smart Christian does not mean, it's not to say that I'm the smart Christian or any one person is a smart Christian, but what is a smart Christian? A smart Christian is not someone that knows it all or even thinks he knows it all. As a matter of fact, if you think you know so much, you can't be a smart Christian. Why? Because a smart Christian is someone who recognizes that he doesn't know all the things that he needs to know. He recognizes that he is deficient in some areas. And so because of that, what does he want to do? He wants to grow in his understanding of the word. We say that we want to love it, learn it, and live it. Well, because we love the Lord so much, we want to learn about his word. And so a good tool to have, some of you want to know, is what really what the best tool to have, some sort of Bible study software. Guys, it's not even close. The best Bible study software, and I, you've seen me use many times, you've seen me use uh, Accordance Bible software. And there's a reason for that, even though it's not the best. I do like Accordance Bible software, but the best Bible software it's not even close. It's Logos. But Corey, why then do you use Accords? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, I didn't know any better when I purchased Accords. I got Accords and I thought that, okay, you know, how, you know how when you purchase something, you are invested in it and you want it to be the best. But when you kind of compare with Logos, and by the way, I had a free version of Logos and I didn't want to mess with it. Why? Because I wanted my, I wanted to be right in purchasing Accords. So I had the free version of Lagos and I purchased Accordance, but there's just no comparison. I'll, I'll tell you about Lagos in just a second. As a matter of fact, I'm going to let you all in on a little bit of secret in just a little bit. But that's one of the reasons. But the main reason is because I use a streaming software called Ecamm. And the, the streaming software, for some reason, it's not Lagos's fault. It's just not compatible sometimes with Lagos. Let me show you what I mean. When I go to Lagos, and I pull this up. Now, this is me. I use Logos. You guys don't see it all the time. You're seeing me use it more and more because I'm figuring out a way to get past a particular bug. But there's a bug, not with Logos. There's a problem with the soft, the streaming software that I use. And it's when I go to the screen to move a passage to, to, to test a particular test. And you'll notice something. If you notice that little jump that it does right there, and I don't know why it does it. It doesn't do it when I'm on my laptop or I'm on the computer just by itself. Now, once I get there and I just kind of scroll it, I can get it back. But that's a bit annoying when we're on a live stream and to have it jump again. This is not a Logos issue. It's a, an, a streaming software issue. And I'm trying to get that worked out so that I can use Logos. But you guys aren't streaming, so it doesn't matter. The best software, and it's not even close, is Logos. And let me tell you why. One, the support that you get if you need anything from them they are always at the ready to help you with accordance uh, love the people there but not so much it's just not as developed not as vast but then more to the point they don't have all the resources the late dr willie bolden who was a professor at dts told me that as you grow you are going to want to increase your library the different books you have and the good news is, rather than having all those books that I have over here, I now have those books plus thousands more, tens of thousands more than what I have over there here at my fingertips. And it's easy to access. As a matter of fact, there are books that I have that I have no idea that I have, but they show up because I'm looking for something. And so if if I go to certain things like the fact book and things like that, and what is a fact book, Corey? What is all the stuff that you're talking about? Well, there are these different tools that you have on Logos to help you to grow in your understanding. Because there's one thing that we don't have. We love the Lord and we want to learn as much as we can about him, but we don't have access to the culture. We don't have access to the time. How did people think? How did they relate? Think about it this way. If you were born in the 19, let's say the 1970s in the Midwest, things are a lot different versus someone who lives in 2024 who is a teenager in 2024 in, let's say, Los Angeles or somewhere down in the South. Vastly different. Now, even though it's only been a short amount of time, we're talking about 30, 40 years difference, 
there's a difference in culture, there's a difference in time and the way we think and understand. What about 2,000 years ago or three or 4,000 years ago? And so one of the things that Lagos helps you to do is to put yourself in the position of the person there. You can go and look at the culture, find out about history and things like that. And, and you have access to other people who have studied this and to understand what they how they view things by these various commentaries. There are there's a wealth of commentaries, there's a wealth of grammars, there's a wealth of lexicon and so forth. And you can set your screen up in vastly in, in so many different ways. For me, this is my kind of my go-to how I look at things. And I've got a bunch of books, but what I'll do is I'll pull up the 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 NASB and I may have the ESB, King James Version, New King James Version to the side. I can have those up here if I want and just go to them. I don't have it up here at the moment. And then I'll have my Greek translation here at the bottom and I'll have my Hebrew translation here at the bottom also. What I also have is what if I want to look at what something says in the uh, in the Greek lexicon, I'm the Greek Septuagint, that is the Greek translation of the Hebrew text. What if I want to see that? So I can pull up these different uh, Septuagint in, the, in Lagos and there's several of them that I have access to. Some of them are written differently, just like we may have different translations in English. And so I want to see what the particular word is. If I'm looking in Genesis or if I'm looking in Malachi, if I'm looking in First Samuel, I want to see what a particular word might be in Greek. Why? Because in the New Testament, most of the quotations from the Old Testament are quoted from the Greek Septuagint. Some of the scholars who are proficient in as far as textual criticism is concerned, will let us know that the lingua franca of the day was Greek, and so a lot of folks spoke Greek. And so it's just helpful to know what the Greek was. And you don't have to be an expert. There's a wealth of different lexicons and so forth. And so if I want to go and see what a particular word is in uh, in the Greek, I've got various Greek uh, lexicon as well as Hebrew lexicon that I'm, I'm kind of running, running through here. Uh, Halot, I've got... Uh, this one is the Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia. I've got BDAG. I've got this, uh, the Greek New Testament of the New, the, I'm sorry, the analytical lexicon of the New Testament Greek. Uh, I can go down here and look in. Um, let me move my picture out of the way so you can see what's over here behind me. I've got all of these different commentaries, and I don't have all of the commentaries up. These are just the ones that I want to look at right now because... If I pull all of them up, it would just be too exhaustive to look at all of them, but I do have access to them. As a matter of fact, if I were to type in a particular word or a particular verse and then look at that, as a matter of fact, let's do that real quick. Let's let's do that kind of on the fly. Let's go to a Bible. Let's go to a uh, passage guide. And in the passage guide, what I also want to do is, where's the passage guide? It's over here. Let's put it right here. And I want to link this first because I want everything that I'm doing in this passage guide to show up in the in the text over here. And so let's look up, oh, I don't know, let's look up John 1.1. 1, 1. And as we see what, what pops up, if you guys can make this out, let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's make this a little bit bigger. That's a little too big. And then what I'll do is, what is, what is pulling up are these different commentaries. And if I just highlight it, it'll give me kind of an outline of uh, what the passage is about, what they're, what they're saying, what this person says, this commentary on it, this commentary on it. And now you only see a few here, but all I got to do is click on the more button and then more, more commentaries pop up and then click on it. More commentaries pop up and then click on it more. Now the number of commentaries that will pop up depends upon the commentaries that you have in the package. One of the things that was confusing to me or that I thought was confusing is how do I even work this stuff? This stuff is so vast. That was the biggest reason that kind of held me back because that's just too much information. I'm old and I don't like to learn new stuff. You know, the old saying, you can't teach an old dog a new trick. Well, the problem is, the reason for that is because old dogs don't want to learn a new trick. I'm thinking this is just too difficult. And it's not. That was one of the biggest mistakes that I ever made. Finding out that to navigate through this is not as difficult as I thought. So with that being mine, I want to offer you guys something. I would like to offer you the opportunity to learn more about Logos on Thursday, June 27th, not at 5 p.m. this time, but at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I'm going to have my good friend here, Chauncey Allman. You've seen him before. He has a beautiful haircut. And when I say a beautiful hairstyle haircut, I mean absolutely wonderful. He is going to be here 
Chauncey is the manager of the national presenter team at Lagos, and so he'll be here to show us how to use Lagos. And one of the things that you might want to see, we're going to go over some of the features, some of the features that I like. I'm going to show you a couple of them in just a second. But he's also going to talk about the different packages that you can get. Uh, they are, they're custom to you. And, and even though they might seem pricey, they're actually not. You can pay for these on a particular payment plan. When I first got Lagos, I didn't have much money, still don't. But you can pay for it all up front if you want to, or you can pay it monthly as you go. Uh, this is not something that, that's required a credit report or anything like that. They're going to pull your credit. And then you will go ahead and get the package that you want. Now, you want to get the right package. There are different packages, so we'll cover the different ones because you want to make sure that you get the one that's right for you. And you can always add books. There are some books that don't come with packages, but they're always having sales or they're even giving away free books on Lagos or I might want this package. I might want this book. I might want this commentary. I need this lexicon. I need this book. There are books that aren't necessarily about uh, commentaries or grammars and things like that. Just maybe some sort of devotionals. Those are there as well. If you want to learn about um, Christian counseling, they're there also. Something else that's here on Lagos that I also want to show you guys as well. One of the things that is impressive about Lagos that you don't have on other Bible study platforms is you can take these different courses or you can just have the video lecture series. For example, if you want to learn Hebrew or you want to learn Greek, there are Hebrew and Greek study courses that you have where there's a video lecture series. So simply reading the book, if you guys want to learn Hebrew or Greek, simply reading the book. Sometimes it's difficult, but if you have the actual person there that wrote the book, have them to give you these lectures over it, that is wonderful. One of the things they also have is I've got the book Greek Grammar Beyond the Basics. Uh, and I've got it on, on other platforms as well. But here, I've got the book, but I also have the video lectures, which is absolutely wonderful. I'll just play this, play it a little bit, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Of course, of course. The perfect this is, is absolutely helpful because you've got this scholar uh, on here, Dan Wallace, who helps you along to understand what, what, what it's talking about. I think this is wonderful. You don't really get this anywhere else. And so that's helpful. One of the other things that I think is also pretty cool is some of the tools that, that, that they have. One that I like is when you're reading a book, a particular book of the Bible, and you want to know, is this referenced somewhere else? I love this particular tool called the Bible Books Explorer. We'll talk about this probably more uh, on next Thursday. But what it is, is if you're looking at a particular book in the Bible, let's say you're looking at Romans, and what it does is it shows all the places that it might either be cited or quoted uh, alluded to or echoed. And so if I'm looking in Romans, I might see that that there are these other books. Let's let's go over here to Isaiah. It's I tested to an Isaiah. So if I click on here, what's going to pop up? Every time that Isaiah is mentioned, well, let me drop down back to Romans because I'm looking in Romans and let's drop and see every time that Romans mentions or alludes or cites Isaiah. I think this is extremely helpful. In this case, we can see how often Paul is citing Isaiah and we can understand really the context of what's being spoken of by Paul. That's the kind of tool that I think is valuable to someone that is trying to grow in the Word. You want to uh, fancy yourself as a Bible scholar, even though you may not have the credentials, the PhDs and so forth, or the D-mens, it doesn't matter. If you you still want to fancy yourself as when you want to act like when you want to pursue the Word um, with a heart just like a scholar would. Why? Because you love it. You love this word just as much as anyone else does. And Lagos gives you that opportunity. So if you're ever in the market looking for Bible software, uh, there are some good softwares out there, but none of them compares with Lagos. And it hurt my heart because the first one that I bought was Accordance, but it was just not the best. I wanted so bad. I wanted to be able to say Accordance is the best. <sighs> Pride gets in the way sometimes, right? Uh, the best software, ladies and gentlemen, is Lagos. If you're a smart Christian, you would want to have Lagos. Accordance is wonderful also, but Lagos is better. So make sure that you're with me on June the 27th at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to have Chauncey Allman here, and we're going to go over all the different features that they have on Lagos, uh, the packages and so forth. And, oh, by the way, if you go ahead, there's going to be a link in the description 
If you go ahead right now, you can sign up for this free webinar as we go through this. So go ahead and click the link in the, in the description below. Go ahead and sign up. It's free uh, as we walk, walk through some of the features in Lagos. And we're going to also have for you guys that sign up uh, and even for some, some weeks after that, uh, the opportunity to get Lagos at a discount. So guys, I hope that all of this that we're doing will be beneficial for you. Uh, I pray that it will be. And in the meantime, God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you there at this Lagos demonstration. Amen. Amen.